Here I'm going to talk about a really important concept in macroeconomic data analysis, which is how to find macroeconomic data on a website. Uh, one thing that's important to know if you're studying economics is how to find data, plot it, use it, uh, use whatever formulas you know. And sometimes students just know the theory or they've never been exposed to it. So here I'm going to walk through Fred data, which is a good starting point, and I'm going to walk through Bank of Mexico. Uh, I've got some different tabs up just because the data sometimes are slow to load, uh, but walking through the process is important. I always leave an extra tab up to see if people are paying attention. Sometimes people have weird stuff in their browsers. Um, always uh, know what you're looking at before you put it up. So uh, just see if you're paying attention. So anyway, here is the most important, or actually one of the most important starting points. It's it's a kind of an easy site to navigate. Sometimes students overuse FRED data, um, but it's a good place to start. It's fred.stlouisfed.org. Or you can just or you can Google FRED data. It'll take you there. But this is what it looks like. It's got you know 763,000 uh, time series when I'm looking at it. It's got multiple sources. Um, one good thing you can do uh, if you're just starting with economics is you can actually just use their plots. So some stuff I've looked up before in the past shows up, looking up some property price data. But I'm just going to look at U.S. unemployment, which has been big in uh, May 2020. Um, see what comes up. It's going to be waiting um, as, as it goes. Uh, but if one thing to notice is uh, you have different frequencies of data, all right, and so it's going to be in percentage. Uh, the employment rate is a percentage, but this is monthly. Uh, you might also find you know different versions of unemployment claims, which are weekly, um, and you might be able to find quarterly or annual as you go. Um, and so I'm just going to take what's up top, which is the monthly U.S. unemployment rate in percent. All right, and and one thing you can do is if you look at it, you can copy this. And you can present it in a paper. It's got the source list. And I always point that out because students who are just starting out in economics might not want to make their own graphs, might not have learned that yet. Here you can actually take this graph, copy it, and plot it. And it's got the source here. And another thing to, to note is that this is, FRED is not the data source. This is from the US BLS, okay, which is the common source for unemployment data. Um, and and what that what's important to know is that the Fred doesn't always collect the data. Sometimes they have their own series up, but they're actually aggregating it from other sites, right? So if you were to take this data and put it in a paper, it's got everything you need to not be plagiarizing. It's got the source listed. It's got the site. Uh, you know you didn't make it, uh, and you wouldn't claim that you made it. All right. Uh, now, if you're in higher level student economics, you want to be able to make your own graphs. Copying other people's graphs is sort of a no-no. Right? But this is perfect if you're putting it in a paper for an undergraduate student. All right. Now it's got the times list. This goes from 1948 up to 2020. You can change this. All right? You can look at say maybe 1973. All right. See if this will come up. And I can change the time as well. All right. Um, this is May 2020, or actually April 2020 data. All right. So he, you can change the time and do all sorts of different stuff. Now, one thing that I would want to do if I were more advanced is you can download the data into different formats. A lot of times I do it in CSV. Um, Excel is fine too. You don't really want to do an image unless you're putting in a paper just as a Fred thing. Uh, PowerPoint, no, a PDF. But I do a lot more with manipulating data post. Um, you know, so, you know, if I were to put on my, I'm going to put on my desktop. All right. See if it comes up. All right. And I can open it. Um, I would be able to do more stuff with the transformations and things like that, which might be important if you're, um, you know, doing things with like, you know, real values and so forth. So this is what it would look like as a typical macroeconomic time series, right? It goes all the way. It's got it as a, per a percentage with one decimal and so forth. And then you can, uh, you know, open another software, do more transformations and so forth, right? But as a good starting point, you can just you can start with this graph. All right. Um, you can also um, edit the graph. Now, if unemployment's got diff maybe less you can do with it, but you can take different versions. Like, for example, you could do an index, which is scaled at 100, um, and, and different things you might want to do. But you can do a lot of different transformations. So let me show you maybe U.S. real GDP or U.S. I'll just do U.S. GDP for here. And... See what comes up first. So there's real, um, and this is quarterly. You don't find monthly GDP. Um, gross domestic product or real gross domestic product. I'll just take real. All right. And now this is going to be in, in a version of the dollar. This is in 2012 dollars. So it's controlling for inflation by keeping that constant. You can see it's rising. You see the recessions just like was for unemployment. Uh, it's 2008 and so forth. There's a recession starting in, in late or early 2020. Um, but what if you wanted to do some sort of growth rate or something like that? 
Um, one thing you can do is you can go to edit, edit the graph, and I, I'm going to do percentage changes. All right, now this is uh, probably quarter on quarter, or you can do an annual percentage. I'll just do this one first, and now you can look over here. This is growth rates in percentage. So the 2008 recession is here, 2020 recession is here. All right, so again, you can do different versions with Fred. It's doing the calculation for you. Now, I could go if I had, you know, skills in Excel or, or other software I could download and do my own percentage changes, but. Um, for now, you, you can just look up the data, get a nice graph, do whatever transformations you want. Now, uh, moving on, I'm here, uh, I'm going to say, like, let's, let's get data from a different site. Now, there's other good sites as well that I talk about. European Central Bank, International Financial Statistics of the IMF, Eurostat, um, you know, all sorts of macro sites. But what if I want to go directly to the source? So I can Google Bank of Mexico. Now it's gonna here. It's gonna know I'm in the United States. It's gonna just automatically pull up English for me. You might be able to override that if you want to do it in Spanish. Sometimes the native language is actually better because it has it's quicker if, if it's not translated and so forth. So if I were to click on this, I go tab by tab. I get to this site. Now you land on a site. Where do you want to go? Now there's all sorts of different things you can learn about the peso. You can learn about maybe academic research, the financial system. You always want to have something that's like statistics. Okay, every site has a statistics. You know tab and they're all different right they're all put together by different people but you might want to know uh you, know, you might want to know how to navigate any kind of a site so every site has something about statistics or database or something and if you click on it uh, now you can click on it you get economic information system all right uh now again i've sort of already clicked on it. if i close this up you know this is the, the landing page right all sorts of different things all right, you might just care about the inflation rate or something, but go on the statistics. I pick that economic information, and now these are the kind of things I care about in macro, right? Exchange rates, uh, bank notes, and so forth, CPI, right? Uh, and and uh, prices and things like that, production. You can go down, you can look at uh, labor market, balance of payments, international stuff. All right, so I'm just going to look at some monetary aggregate, right? So if I click on that, you know, in macro class, you know about monetary base, M1 and M2. All right, so if I click on the different monetary aggregates, this is what it lands at, okay? And now you can see that it's got M1, and, and which is in you know, domestic deposits as well as currency. And M2, you might know the formula, which is M1 plus these different time deposits. It has M3 and it actually is M4, right? So this is what the data look like. But you can't really do much with it. You can't really graph it. Um, and so I might want to take this and export it and have something uh, that I can use as a table. So I can, I can add all the series. I've got all 27 added. I can export the series. So this is a, this defaults is uh, just the, all the series, which is 2000 to 2020. And I'm gonna go with that, right? So if I export the table, you see what happens all right it's going to open it up eventually as some sort of a uh, csv file or something of the like right so oh i gotta pick the format and again i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a csv here all right and i'm gonna save it to my desktop all right and what happens is it'll load and i'm gonna open it up and see what it looks like all right so open it up in excel and now i might have to do a little bit more transformations here um so it's got it's got some stuff you might want to clean up, all right. Um, has some non-available stuff. If you look here, it's got monetary aggregates M1, M all sorts of different versions here. This is actually 27 different series. It's got CPI at the end, so you could actually take real monetary base if you want, or real M1 if you wanted to. All right. So what I'm just gonna take is the first. Uh, series. Now, again, I, I'm just doing some pre-work with Excel. I copy it, I make a new file, and what I do is I paste special, all right? I don't need to transpose it because it's already vertical, all right? But I'm just going to do values in number format, and I get something like this, all right? Now, to clean it up a little bit more, I do this, all right? Now, we know it's in thousands of pesos, right? And again, if you have something that's in millions of pesos, you might have to do some conversions. But I'm just going to, knowing that, I'm just going to have this, going to delete one more line. I've got the date. I'm just going to write M1. Um, and actually, in I'm going to do real quick, as long as I have a little time, also going to do CPI. And I'm going to get some sort of real M1. All right, so I'm just going to delete all this up. And notice I'm going to line it up. All right, now I've got CPI. 
And now, just, just for now, I'm going to delete this, and I'm just going to start in 2001. All right, now I just choose, it's like a low-hanging fruit. I've got the data that they have, and I'm just going to, you know, I don't have a real project, so whatever they got is good for me right now. But now I've got M1, and I've got CPI as an index here, and I'm going to take real M1, and I'm going to do the formula, right, in Excel, M1 divided by CPI. All right, so this is... Real M1, click here, fill it all in. And I'm just real quick. I'm not going to make this look nice at all. I'm going to make a line graph, something like this. All right, this is some uh, value I probably don't need. Um, notice that it's got clear seasonality to it. So the, I'm not, let's see, it's not available. All right, so clear that out. All right, and now I'm going to replot this. Now, again, I found the point here is to look at where I found the data and so forth and make it easy graph. This is this has problems with the data. You can see these little spikes. This is seasonality. I'd have to go in and de-seasonalize it. Or probably in there there's a de-seasonalized series that I'd have to spend some time looking at. Didn't do it. But so this is this is clearly seasonal data. All right. Uh, another problem with Excel, these axes, and this is ugly because this is in billions and this has weird spacing here talk about that elsewhere. So I'm not really going to worry about that right now. What I am going to do is I'm going to do real M1. All right, and this has got even more seasonality to it, but this is the real money supply for Mexico, right? It's a little bit flatter. If I do them both at once, all right, you can plot that here, and you can see that they cross in the base year um, because they both uh, equal the same value. Um, but a real M1 is a little bit flatter. All right, so again, this is a bad Excel graph. It says chart title. It's got weird axes and so forth. I'm not even going to try to clean it up. There's issues with the data needing to be deseasonalized. Not worrying about that. The big point is that I went through two data sites. Okay, I showed you Fred, which went and looked at unemployment and real GDP. Took a graph. We can take a graph directly from Fred. You can copy it and so forth. But you can also download the data for your own transformations. A little more complicated, you can go through a, another data source. Here it's the Bank of Mexico. Navigate where it says statistics. Choose, right, choose the statistic you want. Get a table. Look at the original form, but you can change the data you want and you can change the dates. You, you format it. We downloaded it as a CSV. And then finally, we took that CSV and just did a little formula. We made real money supply, plotted that along with nominal money supply, right? Now, what I would do next is I would make a CSV and I would open it up in R or eViews or another software. You could de-seasonalize, you could do more than that. But right now, we were able to get into a data site, download data, open it up, and start to do some original transformations.